Hey, I want everyone to like me. I want validation. Say you get it. Immediately, I cannot lose this now. Don't lose it. How do I keep the validation? I need money. Okay, you have money. How do I keep the money? You're a slave to it. Now, that doesn't mean don't go for money. It's sever the link between who you are and money. Sever the link between who you are and validation. Sever the link between who you are and success. Right? It's this whole idea of self-worth, core confidence, being good enough. We can't become good enough. This is the foundation of it all. You cannot become good enough. None of you can. You can only realize that you've always been good enough. Why can't you become good enough? Because there's a certain requirement and condition. Say hypothetically, if I did this, now I'm good enough. Well, then it means that by default, without that action, I'm not good enough, so I'm not good enough. If I get this, if I have the money, if I have the approval, if I have the travel, if I have the relationships, if I have my partner, if I have kids, if I have the, then I'm good enough. Well, no, because then it means that without all that, at a core, you're not, so you're not. I'm not good enough, but I have this thing that makes me appear like I am, or makes me feel like maybe I am. But if I lose it, I'm not. So none of you can become good enough, right? Think of it as I'm either down here and I'm trying to move up to becoming good enough. Now, it's a better approach than the opposite. What's the opposite? This is sadly what a lot of people do. We talked about activating your winner effect, toxicity. Um, it's what happened to you. It's if I'm down here, if I bring people down to my level, now I'm good enough. So let me bring their self-esteem down. Let me criticize them so they feel insecure like me and we're at the same level. Terrible. So that's toxic. The other one is I need to improve to their level. Not good either. The question is, why do I think I'm down here? Let me let go of all the conditioning experiences and lies that have convinced me I'm down here and realize that I've always been up here. What has convinced me that I'm not good enough? Let go of that, you're there. Why do I try to find myself in this or that? Let go of that, you're there. It's also shifting, if you're familiar with video games, from first person to third person. If you play a game, there's the player and the character. As the character goes through the game, gathers experience, skill set, learns how to wield a sword, can the character rank up? Yes or no? Yes. yes. As the character ranks up, does it become a better character? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Do you become a better player? A better person because your character ranked up? What if I came to, up to you, all of you here today, I'm like, everyone, before we get into the speech, I just want to let you know that I've been playing the new God of War. I haven't. But let's just say I was. I was playing the new God of War, and my character leveled up to level 10, meaning I am now a level 10 human being. Ha 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 ha, motherfuckers, suck it. What would you be like? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> say, say the next day we had another seminar. I come up, I'm like, everyone, I have some bad news. My character went down to level six. I'm a worse human than I was yesterday. <laughs> You look at me like I'm crazy. You're like, it's a game, dude. What are you talking about? How does that affect your worth? It's a character. Yet that's what we all do. Hey, I woke up today and a um, person smiled at me when I got my coffee. <laughs> oh, I woke up today and they didn't smile at me. They just handed me the coffee. <laughs> I woke up today and I have more in my bank account. <laughs> oh, I woke up today, I don't. I woke up today and I look pretty good in front of the mirror. <laughs> I woke up today and my hair is a bit off. Insane. It's just as insane as the video game. Hey, I, I look up to my coworkers and they're making more money. I saw these other players in God of War and they're a bit ahead of me. I get so jealous and I can't stop thinking about it. I suck. You'd be like, what? Oh, I saw these other people much more ahead in their personal development journey. I suck. No. Detach your self-worth from the external, meaning zoom out. You're not just the character, you're the player. It doesn't matter how much your character levels up, your avatar levels up, because it can. You can make more money, you can get more approval, you can make more friends, you can learn certain skills. Am I good enough to be a surgeon right now, yes or no? No. no. Really? You wouldn't trust me to operate on your heart right now? No. <laughs> really? Someone's like, oh, well, that, that voice, so good. <laughs> no. Does that mean I'm not good enough as a human? 
No. Does it mean that once I learn that skill, I'm a better human overall? No. It just means I have a certain skill. That's it. Same with you here. There's you, zoom out, and there's your quote unquote essence. That's where your self-worth should reside. You cannot be enhanced. You cannot be diminished. If your character levels up, you're still you. Your character levels down, you're still you. Just a character, just an avatar, just an experience. It also doesn't take away from the joy that is living life. Do you only, if you're playing a video game, experience joy when you're moving up? No. Going down adds the contrast, the excitement. It adds some fun, fear, and stress too. If you're on God mode playing a video game, how boring is that? Wherever I aim, headshot. How boring. You want to miss. Oh, but if I miss, it means I'm not as good of a shot. No, that makes the game boring. Same here. We all wish if things went amazingly and according to plan, my life would be so good. No, it'd be boring. That would lead to apathy. So zoom out. You are the player and you are the character. Key. Don't just aim to be the player. This is also the trap of spirituality. We're like, I want to be enlightened and non-dual. I want to be oneness. That's death. You're not put on this earth to just be oneness. That's trying to escape life. It's recognizing that, again, not to get too out there, that oneness source, but also realizing I'm that and this. It's not this or that. In a way, trying to chase oneness is forming another ego. Most people are trying to find themselves, I'm only the character. Then they flip it around, I'm not the character, but I'm all this. But then there's also resistance. No, you're everything this. You're both. You're oneness living this experience through this character that is you. And when you shift to that, everything becomes way lighter and more authentic and more fun. Funny enough, taking this whole video game mindset also brings so much authenticity to your life, right? Where say you viewed life as a video game and in the end you have to return it, right? Say we take GTA, bang, here's the game. You have to return it when you die. You cannot keep it forever because you're all going to die. How are you going to play this game so that when you return it and someone asks you, it's like, here's the game back. And you're like, how was it? You answer, it was great. How would the game, like, how would you describe this game of life right now? Say all of you were to die this second. Bang. I'm the universe. I'm God, whatever. And I'm like, return the game, return the game. How was it? How was it? What did you do? Did you explore? Did you play? Did you milk it to the max? Some of you are like, well, I was a little shy, so I just stayed in my little building the whole time. <laughs> oh, I, um, I chased a lot of material goods. Um, I worked a lot, and I, and I bought some nice clothes in the game. I did the taxi cab mission around the block again and again. Oh, okay. <laughs> How are you going to return it? So you're like, yes, I crushed it. But that's life. No matter what you do, what any of us do, we all get the same thing in the end, by the way, death. No matter what you do, we all die, all of us. The question is, how are you gonna live your life so that there are no regrets? So when you look back, you're proud of the life you lived. You played the game you authentically wanted to play it in that way. Even if you think of it as a movie, how's the movie of your life so far? Ideally, you're living a life that is so exciting that actual movies are boring in comparison. If movies reach a point where they are more exciting than your actual life, you're fucking up. And the question there is, well, how, what has to change in terms of who I am and how I live my life so that those movies become boring? And that's in your control. There's nothing holding you back from living a crazy movie-like life. It's not just, oh, well, it's only the celebrities that can do that. It's everyone. Everyone. All of you can. Guess what? It's a movie that allowed me to move to Los Angeles, by the way. I grew up in Switzerland. Um, small farm town, 650 people. I think it's 750 now, small farm cow town. Um, I was very sheltered growing up. I didn't learn the word fuck till I was 12. No joke. Um, I bought a Limp Biscuit album. <laughs> and uh, this is a true story. I've never shared this. I bought this Limp Biscuit album. It was like a chocolate covered or a starfish or something. And uh, there's this one song where they say so many fucks in a row. And I really like that song. I did not know the word fuck. So I'm like, oh, this is such a good beat and song. And I called my mom in. And uh, <laughs> so just to put it in context, I grew up speaking French. So school, all my friends, everything is French, French, French. 
Uh, my dad spoke French, and then my mom is from America, so I'd speak English with her. And she, of course, never taught me the word fuck. So very sheltered, I'm like, oh, you know what, this is a good song. Mom, listen to this. And she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> she didn't say what the fuck. <laughs> but she came and she's like, how did you get this? What is this? Oh my, and I'm like, I was so confused. I'm like, what's, what's wrong? It's what? Uh, and then later on I learned, oh, fuck's a bad word. Um, so that's how sheltered I was. And I was the type of person I got good grades, went to school, did everything right, right? Followed the plan. It's like moving up and then I'm gonna get my job and I'm gonna go to university, get a promotion, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I didn't like what I did. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't the movie that was for me. And uh, I felt empty inside. I found myself getting really wrapped up in a lot of escapism uh, where just like watching those movies, I remember that I was at university and I'd go to school, come back, and then I would just binge shows and movies till I'd pass out. And uh, I'd also eat. Like for me, numbing with food is one of my go-to escapes. And I was just so down and I was like, this sucks. I wanna do something more, I was studying business at the time. I wanna do something more creative, whether it's music um, or anything self-expression. And I wanted to move to Los Angeles. And uh, I always thought, well, you know, small kid from Switzerland, maybe that's not for me. It's for the rock stars and movie stars, but not you. And then I saw this movie called Into the Wild. That movie gave me permission to live life in an authentic way. That's what allowed me to say, hey, you know what? Screw this, I'm moving to LA. The whole plot of it, you can watch it. It's a great movie, great book too. Um, is that he ultimately quits his regular job in life and goes into the wild. Just starts wandering, being a vagabond, just going into the wild. Now it sounds crazy, but ultimately what's blocking any of us from doing that now? Oh, well then I won't make money. Okay, well how much money do you really need? then I, I can't afford my apartment. Do you need an apartment to survive? But then I can't afford a bed, sleep on the floor. Will you die? No. Nothing's really blocking us from just walking out and winging it. Right? And I was like, if he could do it, so can I. And I literally quit everything, moved to LA. No plan, nothing. Arrived here, my guitar, my suitcase, 5K in cash, that was it. Stayed at a motel. Western and Hollywood. <laughs> it's pretty ghetto, hookers around. Uh, found a place on Craigslist, many places on Craigslist, and uh, the adventure began. Worked my way up. That was my humble beginning. That was the beginning of the hero's journey. Winging it, homeless a couple times, living uh, at some point among cockroaches at a friend's uh, basement area. Um, this is when I lost everything. Literally, I was like, can I just stay with you? Just like into the wild. And he, I was staying in his basement. There was a couch. It was infested with cockroaches. No joke. I stayed there for like good three, four weeks where every morning I'd wake up and it was guaranteed there'd be one, if not two cockroaches on me. So you know that feeling sometimes when you wake up and you're like, mm, something's tickling my leg and you just kind of scratch your leg. I'd feel a cockroach. Big one. I uh, forgot to turn my computer off a couple times, and there's the USB ports that still are warm, and the cockroaches would go and lay eggs in the computer, and baby cockroaches would come out of the computer. True story. I've been through it all. I've been through a lot. Um, so, but, but here's another one, right? This sounds terrible, and it was. It was beyond terrible. But notice how now it looks, it makes for a great story, and I'm not gonna lie, a small part of me misses it. Like if I could, have a flashback, teleportation, go back and spend one night with the cockroaches, I would. I was like, I miss you. Here's a new, a new computer, <laughs> lay your eggs. <laughs> right, but hey, that, that's the jump, that's the jump. Um, and then I was smart and I worked my way up and so on and so forth and then I built something, it crashed, I went through a scandal, I built it up and now I've, a family, I have kids. It's like, it's all these different phases in this crazy epic movie that is my life. Nothing's blocking you, except your own mind and limitations. Whatever you think is blocking you. You can go into the wild. That was no joke, the last push. So how are you gonna live your life? Now that doesn't mean be destructive, be crazy. I went about things not necessarily at times in the smartest way, but I sat down and I was like, hey, if I'm gonna live this thing called life, why would I live it in an inauthentic way? Now some of you might think, well, it, it would please my parents, it would please my parents. Well, then you're selling out for your parents' approval. If right now, hypothetically, your parents were to die, they're gone, and let's just say we fast forward time, past the grieving phase, 
you're at peace with it, they're gone, you've moved on in a healthy way, would the way you live your life change? For a lot of people, it's like, oh, I'd feel way less pressure now that they're, it sounds messed up, but again, past the grieving phase, now that they're gone, less pressure. They won't be judging me. I could do this. I could finally pursue this. Well, hey, that's no different than selling out. You're selling out right now for your parents. You're selling out for society. You're selling out for the approval of your friends. You're selling out for whatever you think is right for you and your conditioning. Stop selling out. You're no different than, than a little artist who sells out for money and makes shitty ass songs. Except you're selling out for your parents. Let me live a shitty ass life for you, Papa and Mama. Why? But then they won't like it. Who cares? They're not you. And ultimately, if you really think deep down inside, what is it, assuming they're a good parent, what is it that they want from you? For you to be happy. They didn't want you to be a little bitch people pleaser to them. I hope. And if you're like, well, no, they do. Well, then fuck your parents. What kind of shitty parenting is that? It's like, you will be my slave. Please me till you, till I die or you die. Don't you dare follow your dreams, slave boy. Step it up. Like literally, what the fuck is that? No. Now, they might have their own way of what they think might make you happy, but they aren't you and they don't know you. When it comes to authenticity, it's trust yourself. Trust yourself over that. It's like, and even if there is some tension. When I moved to LA, were my parents happy? What do you think? No. no. They're like, you walk out this, this door, you're disowned, you're dead to us. For real. There was a big period of tension. Now, we're great now. We're back in touch now. The relationship's better than ever. But we had to go through that small phase. The phase of what? Destruction when it comes to transformation. And from their perspective, it made sense too. It's like, hey, if there's your kid, it's like, hey, my, I'm moving to LA. Do you have a plan? Nope. Winging it into the wild. If you're a parent and you care for your kid, like, well, maybe play it smarter. It's like, nope. So you can get where they're coming from, but they aren't you. So audit your life. Hey, where am I selling out? Why am I selling out? I'm going to die. And the biggest form of failure is arriving on your deathbed, assuming you make it that far, and having regrets that are in your control. People tend to glorify this. Funny enough, I did a a stand-up comedy just for fun once, and this was one of the bits where I'm like, fuck old people. That's how I started it. And everyone's just like. <laughs> I'm like, but not every old person. Old people on their deathbeds. Everyone's like, oh. I'm like, but not every old person on their deathbed. The ones with regrets. <laughs> but hear me out. You see this sometimes. There's these motivational videos, Instagram and stuff, and it's like a series of old people on their deathbed, and they're talking about their regrets they had. And it's always the same. Right? I wish I would allow myself to be happier. I wish I would allow myself to just be more present to things. I wish I would allow myself to follow my dreams and not play it so safe and take more risks. And people watch that and they heart it and they comment, that's so pure and beautiful. The only appropriate comment to that is one word, pathetic. For real, pathetic. That is literally the film capture of a fuck up. Why? Because they fucked up. They're literally admitting, it was in my control and I fucked up. And here died a loser. That's how I view it. I'm going to show that to my kids and say, never be this. Never. That is fucking up. Now again, to be clear, it's regrets that are in your control. Everyone's going to have regrets that are out of your control. That's normal. That's human. But in your control, Allowing yourself to be happier. If you didn't, you fucked up. What are you doing? I didn't follow my dreams. Why? You fucked up. What are you doing? Oh, I wasn't present enough. Why? What the fuck are you doing? And why are you proud? Like, why is that glorified at the end? So wholesome. You should be disgusted by that. That should be a warning sign. Don't let that be you. This is a fuck up. Don't be that. Realize it now. But then again, we live like we're going to live forever, right? I have eternity. I have so much time. I can be a fuck up a little longer. I'm not going to be them. No, you could die any time. Then it's also aligning yourself with reality. You could die leaving the seminar room. You could be hit by a car. You could die right now and have a brain aneurysm. Gone. If you return the game of life right now, again, brain aneurysm, how would you feel? If not happy, switch it up. This is also why it's very important in my experience and opinion to do a death meditation from time to time. I take my clients through this. I'm like, imagine you died and you reflect back on your life. How do you feel about the person you were? 
the life you lived? What would people say about you? Are you proud? Are there regrets? Are there things like, oh, I wish I had more time to do this or that? And ideally, you switch things up. You realize that. This is what we call die before you die. You get these realizations and you switch it up so that when eventually you do a death meditation, there are no regrets and you're at peace. That's the ideal. That's the ultimate test. If you were to die right now, you'd be like, yep, I'm good. I crushed it. Yep, All right, here's the game. Thank you. Versus, no, I needed a little bit more, a little bit more. Then you fucked up. So switch it up now. You don't have to wait till your deathbed to realize it. Realize it sooner and change it up. And that's ultimately the, the more important truth. And it, I mean, in my opinion, it's like, that's the thing you should care about more than what anyone else thinks. Right? It's your experience. Take charge. So, again, back to the video game of life. Detach your self-worth, live authentically, live for you, make your life like a movie, the cheesy saying. And it doesn't mean it's just a one style movie, there's different phases, right? Going back to the hero's journey, read up about that, right? Joseph Campbell, it's like the classic example is Star Wars. There's your humble beginning, right? You're shy, you leave the town, I move to Los Angeles. And don't think that there's a better part, this is also very important. When you play a video game, the game doesn't get more fun, you enjoy every level. Right? It's not like, I hate this game until I reach level 10, then it'll be fun. Same with your own journey here. Well, I'm starting out, but I have such a long way to go. Great. You don't want to rush to the end of the game. That's what people do. I just want to get to the end. Then as soon as you get to the end, it's like, oh, I wish I could play it a bit more. No, play, enjoy it every step and enjoy the contrast. Me wishing I could go back and spend a night with some cockroaches. That's true. You're going to miss your humble beginnings. You are, you can be like, I wish I could go back to that part of the journey again, just for a little bit. So enjoy it now. That's the, the Star Wars, it's the, the first original Star Wars, right? Episode four, it's like, you're Luke leaving the desert. That's where you're at. Hey, you're further ahead, great. Boom, you get your hand cut off. That's the adversity. Now you're like, oh gosh, everything's crumbling. My hand's cut off. Hey, that's the best movie. Enjoy it, enjoy your hand getting cut off. Oh, and then I come back and I'm the, you know, the return of the Jedi. Yeah, well, enjoy that too. Enjoy the whole ups and downs. There's no better part. If you aren't enjoying the right here, right now, you will never enjoy a future part. Because in the end, what are you left with? The relationship with the right here, right now. That's all you're left with. You can't enjoy the right here, right now. You're not gonna enjoy the right here, right now, two days from now, five years from now. And then you can also catch if you're in a hurry, what are you trying to do? You're trying to rush towards death. Why do that? I just wanna skip ahead till I've made it. I want to skip ahead till this day. Oh, it's Monday. I want to skip ahead to Friday. I want to skip ahead to death. Insane. Embrace the contrast. And if you view everything as an experience, it also becomes much more pleasant and enjoyable. Stop making it mean something about you. Guess what? I, I worked a ton of just, you could say, entry level minimum wage paying jobs when I first moved here. My first job was at the coffee bean and tea leaf at the Grove. If you ever been to that one, that's where I worked. I was serving coffees, I was a barista there. I then worked at Lucky Brand Jeans that was there, it closed down. Um, worked selling car warranties over the phone, worked selling cars, worked doing weird ads online, I've done it all. The first, uh, the coffee bean, the first time I worked there was like minimum wage was eight bucks an hour. And then I eventually got a 825 and I believe 850 promotion. So 850 an hour, pretty good at the time. No, I'd make like 800, maybe 1,000 a month, that was it. Cut in rent, health insurance, it was, I was left with nothing. Um, now, that there, if I made it mean something about me, it's like, well, what kind of human am I? I'm just an $8 an hour human. It'd be terrible versus, no, I'm a human who is enough and I'm having this crazy experience. It's like starting out in the video game and you have to go find your sword, you have no sword. But where's my sword? No, now you're, you're this player having the no sword experience. Go get your sword. Doesn't mean anything about you. Same here. And anytime you go for something new, there's going to be the tension. There's going to be the unknown. There's going to be adverse, like adversity. That's part of it. Any good movie has ups and downs. If you watch a movie or everything went well, how boring is that? You don't want that. And usually those downs lead to amazing lessons. Like all of you here are here because you've experienced something where you're like enough's enough or you wouldn't be here. So in a way, 
your worst moment led to this path of growth and self-actualization. So what is adversity? What is, we're like, it's so bad, is it? No. And oftentimes you also need that to realize deeper truths about yourself, which you can then work on and let go of. So, hey, live your life so that, rewinding back to the old people, when you do die, instead of being in one of those little videos, like, I just wish, I want to warn the younger generations, let yourself be happy. Be in that compilation and when it shifts to you, you're on your deathbed and you look and you're like, no regrets, motherfuckers. Peace out. And you die. That's the ideal. That's how you know you won.